Welcome to this week's episode of the MacGasm Podcast. I'm Joshua Schnell. And I am Luca Fiore. And today we're going to talk a little bit about some video type peripherals and apps. Uh, we're going to talk about the Elgato H264. Yep. Uh, and iMovie for the iPad. And uh, software that you might use to uh, encode it with. Yeah, for sure. So why don't we start with the Elgato H264? It, this is the Turbo 264 oh, right. HD. Well, Turbo, you got to remember that. Well, little details here or there. But uh, basically what this is is a uh, USB uh, hardware accelerator that specifically what it's meant for is uh, for H.264 files. So H.264 is probably the most popular uh, codec destined for web. In fact, uh, this camera records H.264s natively. Um, yeah, and uh, in this case, if you want to be able to pump them out in real time, this thing will be able to let you do that. So. Pros and cons. Um, if you're using Final Cut, you'll have to um, make a Final Cut MO <laughs> 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 yeah. You'll have to make a Final Cut like MOV uh, file, like a, a native Final Cut uh, QuickTime movie, and then put that into its software that it comes with in order to get real time compression. Uh, that uh, well, that won't uh, have issues like where uh, yeah. we were talking with, there were sync issues that sometimes happen. Like you can use this directly with Final Cut if you want, but you'll have audio so, sync issues that I found at least. So how, how does it work right off the top? Like literally the steps, what do you do? Well, literally plug it in okay. and so, turn on the software and then throw your footage into there and encode it. Okay. And it, and it has uh, presets for iPhones, for 720, 1080, cool. like whatever. You know. So you do your cut first, you export it out of Final Cut, and then you take that file and throw it into the, the software. Elgato software. Yep. Cool. And that you're saying is almost real time. So like a 16 minute real, video will be will almost take you 16, minutes. 16 minutes, which is unheard of speed. Wow, that's very crazy. Um, can you do? Can you like queue up different compressions? You can. That's pretty fantastic. Yeah, you can in the software itself. Yeah. Okay. Um, it doesn't look as good though. Really? Uh, and I'm talking like. Yeah, I wouldn't use it as a final to give to YouTube or something like that. If you wanted something to look its best, I wouldn't use this as a final. What this is useful for is for an editor that has to pump out 264s in a hurry. And in all honesty, uh, as an editor, I can tell you that uh, that's been the case often enough where I just have to like get the file as quickly as possible. And it's faster than a single pass run through and it looks better than a single pass run through. So, so the videos we upload to YouTube uh, right now yep. aren't run through this? No, they are, okay. uh, they are run through a uh, compressor. Okay. Yeah, in, a, in its regular like preset that I've already made. Yeah. Okay, so for professional use, you wouldn't really recommend it too Actually, much? for professional use, I would recommend it, okay. but with an asterisk of it's not for a final output for web, as it were. It's, so it's, like it's mostly for, for to increase or... the speed of your workflow or for drafts, yeah. Okay. Can it do anything other than H.264? No, just, that's that's so that, just one hundred percent issue. Just score. that being said, it's the most popular yeah, web sure. code. It's it's destined for web stuff, mm -hmm. and it's the most popular codec. It's the most efficient codec, okay. and a lot of machines understand H.264 because it's just so right. gosh darn popular. So if we get to the point where we need a different codec, an AVI or an MPEG or something, we're going to need obviously software to to convert that. Yep. Uh, what kind of software are we looking at? Uh, there's one. I can't remember the publisher, but it's called Handbrake. Yeah, I think it is just Handbrake. That's the company. Is that, is that right? it? Handbrake? Yeah, I'm pretty yeah. sure. Um, yeah, and Handbrake's pretty awesome because you can, well, it does two things. It rips DVDs um, for legal purposes. Yep. Um, and it, Which it is takes very a... useful just in case <laughs> a client gives you a DVD, like a DVD movie with yeah. footage on it saying, yeah, edit this. I'm like, what do you want me to do with that? Yeah. Like yeah. So it'll, uh, it'll convert it to a whole host of codex, pretty much everything you can think of, but they also have presets built in. So if you want it for the Apple TV, you just click the Apple TV yep. preset. You can go and tweak after that, which is pretty cool, like bit rates and stuff. But in addition to ripping DVDs, it also transcodes. So yep. it'll go from, for instance, H.264 to an AVI or an MPEG. Um, and it's pretty much just select source, select destination, pick your codex, hit play, off you go. Yep. Um, pretty handy. It's not hugely user friendly if you I, I guess yeah no, I guess I guess sure. if you want to stick to the presets it is very user friendly 
or it can be very, very detailed if you want, which is a both good and bad thing. I guess maybe, um, I wish maybe for the consumer market, they would have had a version where the, um, the more user-friendly aspects yeah, yeah. to it were yeah, yeah, for sure. just front and prominent and then like hidden away, they had an advanced tab, so you just click it and all of a sudden, yeah, be awesome. the whole world opens up. It would almost be simpler if they just made you pick a preset and then the advanced tab, do you think? Because there's de-interlacing and all that stuff, which if you're into it, you know what that means. Yep. But, you know, the first time I opened it, I was like, what the hell is this and why do I need to use it? Um, so, hand uh, handbrake's free. Uh, it's available on all major platforms, I believe, Windows, OS X, and Linux. Cool, so let's move on from this codex stuff and talk quickly about iMovie for the iPad. Now, um, I don't own an iPad, nor an iPhone, but uh, yeah. so Josh is going to pretty much lead this one, and I'm just going to pick it Well, there's frame. not much to say about it, because unfortunately, um, and we'll get some better close-up shots, I just want to get this going quickly. Um, Unfortunately, it's very basic. So iMovie for iPad, yep. um, it's not Final Cut, it's not iMovie transfer to iPad, it's iMovie scaled back. Tremendous. If that's even possible. IPad. Yeah, it's, it's pretty crazy because when they released it, they released it with like GarageBand, and GarageBand is pretty much GarageBand, obviously scaled back. But everything you think you would be able to do in GarageBand, you can pretty much do on the iPad. Um, multi-track editing, right? You can record your tracks or use loops or whatever. Um, iMovie, the whole concept of like your editor, there's things you cannot do. So you can't, I couldn't figure out how to cut the track. So you'd have to pinch it to, to cut it, but you couldn't like slice something to, to rearrange. For me, I couldn't figure it out very easily. You can't speed things up um, or slow it down. So uh, a couple of weeks before we released the first Macgasm video. We did a quick video on YouTube and it was me just saying, yeah, we're working on it. And I was running up the stairs with the camera to you guys working on the couch. And I was like, shit, this is like 10 seconds of wasted time. I'm going to speed it up and just leave it sped up. Not going to happen. Yeah. So things like that are definitely not possible in uh, iMovie for the iPad, which kind of pissed me off a little bit. So what do you mean by like you had trouble cutting? Because that's pretty much like the probably okay, one of the so, most basic things of an editor. So to get, to get, you get a video clip and it's in there. Um, you pretty much shoot with the, the camera or an iPhone or something. Yep. So getting content into iMovie from an external source is a pain to start with. Right. So if you have footage, for instance, from your Canon, um, getting it into iMovie on the iPad to edit, it's not really worth it. Yep. So it's really meant for... Onboard. Video yeah, using the recorded, cameras yeah. On, on the iPad, which really suck, or, transform, or transporting from your iPhone to the iPad iPhone video is pretty good, uh, relationally. So, so you get your clip, you finally get into the editor, and you have, you know, your clips. You pick one, you drag it to your timeline. Okay. Now, if I want to split that up, your option is pretty much to shrink that clip. So you pick the end point and the beginning point, and you kind of contract them. You like drag, and then all of a sudden your clip's gone from whatever, like 30 seconds to 10. So there's so you no. you can pick th your 10. There's no going back. You, well, you, it's non-destructive. There's, there's, it's non-destructive, so you can get that at video back in there, but you can't be like, okay, split this clip in half, move this second half down, and put something in between. Not there. Not simply, and not any way I could figure. Now, uh, minimal time was spent with the app. Um, but like I said, I was extremely disappointed in this app. Like, what, who's going to use that? The cool thing is it, is it can upload to YouTube, it can upload to Vimeo, it can upload to... I feel like that's the basics well, like yeah. a, a, of, a, of, a, of a machine that has constant access to the internet. Okay, of course it can upload directly yeah, to YouTube sure. or Vimeo. You're not, you're not going to do any hardcore editing for sure. And I think their market was people who are going to be out, you know, nephew's birthday party, you're getting clips, you're going to piece them together, upload to YouTube for the family who couldn't make it done. Well, and but, I think it's to replace, um, well, the iPad in general, I think it's just to replace the the, the netbook or the laptop that you would take to uh, out and about with you. Uh, you have your iPad, you record yeah. video, you put edit and upload it on, on the On the spot things. Yeah. It's not, not get it home and it's not it's not replacing your computer. No, no. But I, can on, but I can but honestly say as somebody who's used multiple editing platforms that I think in every platform I've ever used, I have always at one point wanted to take a clip, split it in half at some point, yeah. and be able to easily do that. And I think that like, that you, I think that a software like this, or an, app, or an yeah. application that limits you in, in this way is 
is silly. Right. Is it, really silly. It, it, it seems half baked. It's it seems half-baked. more towards mom and dad than it is. Do you yeah. do you not think mom and dad would at one point it's like, yeah, I want to just split it in half and like sorry. That's I mean, the problem. It's, I just feel like there's some there's some things that that I think maybe Apple's have. not or 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 a lot of or a lot of like basic uh, applications aren't just like processing that. These are like the basics that people want to do. Is yeah. they want to just cut a cut a clip, maybe put some music on it, and it's out. put a title on, split it in half, or take the audio and put it somewhere else. And I can't tell you how many times yeah. I, I've I've longed for that in like just basic editing software. Part of it has to do with marketing, right? Because Apple's all, this is the next generation, this is how we're gonna do things, this is replacing computers for people. Not professionals, but mom and pops. Well, the reality of the situation is, is that's not true. Because, uh, to use GarageBand as an example, I wanted to record a podcast. Um, so I used iPad to record the podcast, and I plugged in the mic system all into the, the input, and we're good to go, we're recording, the, the audio's on the iPad, great. Now I wanna get that podcast into GarageBand on the Mac, just to do some touch-ups and stuff. Okay, I can do that. One track will go to the GarageBand on the Mac. To get it back from GarageBand on your desktop to GarageBand on your iPad, it will not import again. Because there's only eight tracks on the iPad, the GarageBand. So they're paranoid that people are gonna all of a sudden take this like 20 track song and bring it to the iPad, I can't do that. Well, the reality of the situation is, it should know this is all on one track. Yep. You're good, you can go back. And it's the same thing with iMovie. It's like, there's no connectivity between the two platforms that are the same software package where it should be. You, you should be able to go from iMovie on your iPad with the video, with a basic edit, to iMovie on the Mac to do a little more complex stuff. And then if you want to bring it back to the iPad for simple, quick edits while you're on the road, last second, it should do that, and it doesn't. It really doesn't. So I'm extremely disappointed. Um, like I said, if, if you're going to shoot a video... You know, your kids are playing soccer quick and you want to send grandma and grandpa the video. Um, it's great for that because you're just shooting the video, clipping off the bad ends Jeez, off I, to the races. That's, I wouldn't recommend it for anything more than that at all. Cool, so that kind of wraps up, I think, this week's episode. Uh, it was a little bit off the cuff and some stuff we had kicking around. Yep. Um, so, talked about the H264, uh, Elgato H264. H Turbo, Turbo 264 H HD. Not, all right, all right, I got it wrong. From Elgato. Yeah. Good job, Elgato. Great job. Yeah, uh, iMovie for the iPad, and we talked a little bit about... Handbrake. Handbrake. Yep. Yeah, we're everywhere. Twitter.com slash Macasm, Facebook.com slash Macasm, YouTube is YouTube.com slash Macasm podcast, which is probably where you're seeing this, unless you're subscribed. You can get us in iTunes. Uh, just search for Macasm podcast, and we'll be up. Yeah, so that's it for Macasm. I'm Joshua Chanel. I'm Luca Fiore. Have a good week. Godspeed. Thank you.